Now on day 91, 91 days since we learned of the first case of the coronavirus in Illinois. And tonight, a shocking find by our CBS2 investigators into an assisted living facility not reporting COVID-19 cases. CBS2 investigator Dave Savini started asking questions. The county launched a full investigation. Dave joins us now live. And Dave, you talked with a nurse who says workers are afraid for themselves and their residents. Erica and Brad, I'm standing out in front of the Carrington and Lincolnwood where workers have come forward to us to tell us about problems here. Now, if you go to the state website, you won't see any COVID-19 uh, COVID positive cases listed there. But we did find there's a definite outbreak here, and now the county has a full investigation underway. They didn't have to die. They may have had a few more months, a few more years, and that's what, that, that haunts me. Marcy Luna is a nurse who left her job at this assisted living center, the Carrington in North Suburban Lincolnwood. Everything just was chaotic. We did not have enough PPE. We were told to not chart certain things. We were, um, we weren't kept in, in the loop of anything and there was absolutely no transparency. And it got so bad to the point that I um, feared for my physical health. Those fears might be well-founded. Despite the state of Illinois Department of Public Health website showing no COVID cases here, the truth is there really is a COVID-19 outbreak here. The CBS2 investigators obtained records from the facility showing there are as many as 29 virus cases, 17 residents, four of which died, and 12 more positive staff members. We knew that there were positive patients, but we did not see any of that reflected on the website. Luna says she wants to know why this virus data is missing from the public page. You're frustrated. I'm frustrated and it's it's terrifying to me. And I worry, even though I'm not there, I worry about the residents and the staff. What does she worry about? She says there are other problems too. As the pandemic was making news, there were issues inside here. She documented like on March 14th, when she recorded video of a dining room infested with ants. The floor infested, I mean, to the point that they were crawling inside the cabinets. And I spent about an hour cleaning the area before actually attending to my residence. And garbage with used medical supplies like gloves and garments left in piles and hallways. The gloves were not properly disposed of. They were just thrown on the floor as if it didn't matter. A lot of the CNAs were in a rush to get in and out of the rooms because we, they didn't have the proper PPE. So they just discard whatever, wherever. And it was very scary because that's disease carrying. And she says there was a lack of testing early on as residents grew sick, showing symptoms as far back as March 15th, but were not tested. The facility went on lockdown the next day, not allowing visitors. The biggest thing is that no one, not even caregivers or you know, close family members are allowed in, so they don't know what's going on. They don't see what's really happening. Some of the information we obtained includes warnings sent to multiple members of management by a health care worker, urging them to stop serving meals to large groups of patients in dining rooms here. Sources say there were as many as 20 to 30 people in one of those rooms at any one time. And that was concerning because it was a petri dish in there. It was literally just a disaster. How close were they? How close were they? They were within a feet apart. It's important to note those dining areas were located in the memory care unit on the first floor. How many of those people from the memory care side have now died? To my knowledge, four. All of this was deeply concerning to Marcy Luna, not just because she was their nurse, but because she is an ovarian cancer survivor with a compromised immune system. She says she found out on March 16th that she was exposed to a female resident who may have been exposed to the virus. Two days later, I had a fever of 102 and I, was, I went to my doctor and he put me on isolation. And when I returned to work, I mean, I was negative, thank God, but I returned to work to the same conditions that I left. When she returned to work, she says she learned the female resident had died but she says the woman was never officially tested for COVID-19. They really deserved better and a lot of them were really scared. And you said you went to management. Yes, I did. Did you get to know some of the people that died? 
I got very close to the residents and I know too personally that I really cared for who passed away and it's really upsetting because I got really close to them and they deserved better and I know that and I have some guilt I wish I would have maybe spoke up sooner Bottom line, the Cook County Health Department is launching a probe now. They want to know why it took eight days for them to learn about the outbreak here. And they also want to know why it was a private lab that contacted them and not this facility. Officials here at the Carrington say they were calling the county a hotline number, a phone number there, and leaving messages, they say, they claim. But uh, they claim they didn't know they could actually fax uh, the reports to the county. The county says that's just not true. That's not what their records show. They see no calls from them, and uh, the investigation was launched today. Uh, also today, they called the facility, and they weren't even given the right numbers. The numbers we reported tonight, which we got from the facility, were about double the numbers that the facility gave them today on the phone. Okay, so Dave, you're saying, well, Carrington, they claim they left messages. The, the city or the, the public health says that they had options for doing this. Are you able to track whether there were actually any hotline messages at all? No, uh, the, the, we, the county health department says they don't have any, and it was actually them calling here uh, after the private lab contacted them. Uh, that would have been actually 10 days after the outbreak here. So they were way behind on knowing what was going on over here, and they also said they didn't even know about all the deaths. There, there were deaths missing from the reports, and they didn't know about the staff members being sick here or testing positive with COVID-19. Okay. Investigator Dave Savini, thank you.